Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you so much, Yoram, uh, uh, for having me uh, today. Um, my name is uh, Yosef Kandiadi. I am a, a moved from uh, Jerusalem, Israel, Yerushalayim, Israel, uh, three months ago to um, San Diego, where I'm today acting as uh, the director of Stand With Us here in uh, San Diego. Um, I will talk about a little about Stand With Us after I talk about the parasha, because I think that they're very related uh, one to another, and the work we do is very related to what Avraham did in his times. So let's talk a little bit about um, uh, Avraham and the parasha. So as we know, um, the Torah wasn't broken up to parashiot. It was one long story, and uh, eventually they were broken up. And uh, one of the things we sometimes forget when from week to week is to look at the person um, that is uh, being presented to us by, um, by, the, by the Torah. Um, and to look at Avraham's uh, personality and what he does and how he acts is something very, very interesting um, to me. I actually, to look at every one of the personalities, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef, um, and to see the whole picture of how the Torah wants to represent them is something that is, uh, I find very, very fascinating. So, um, if we talk about Avraham, um, which we read about from uh, Parashat Lech Lecha, basically the end of Parashat Noach, um, until the, this parsha where he passes away, we, um, we see something, uh, a few very interesting lines of character that we, can, uh, that we should address and we should learn from, obviously. Um, the first thing is that Avraham, from the beginning, the first commandment that he gets from God is, uh, he says to him, God says to him, uh, uh, rise, get up, and leave your land, and leave your, your family, and go to Israel. And um, later on, we see that uh, another few commandments God tells him. Um, he says to him, you know, you should go and do Kedat uh, Yitzchak, you should slaughter your son. And uh, another thing he tells him is Brit uh, Milah. Um, now, all these things are things that are big things. They're not small things. Um, we, we, we see that, uh, you know, leaving your, your country, your, your place you, you grow up with, the culture you have, everything you have to get up and leave, just because God said is something very, you know, something very, like, traumatic. Like, you, not everybody can do that. And Avram doesn't say anything, gets up and leaves. Akedat um, Yitzchak, when God says to him, you know, uh, wake up in the morning and uh, go and, and uh, sacrifice your son. Um, he does, it's like a dramatic thing. Like not every person would just say, oh, okay, uh, you know, God said so, so I should get up and, um, and, and I, I, should, I should do what God said. Maybe I should argue with him. And no, it doesn't happen that way. He just does it. He gets up in the morning, he, he, early in the morning, it says, um, and, he, and, he, and he goes and, he, and he's uh, uh, on the way to slaughter his son. Uh, and we know the story of Akedat Yitzchak, and obviously Brit Milah, which is another very, um, uh, it's kind of a crazy thing to do, uh, but uh, Avram doesn't uh, argue, and he gets up, and uh, he takes his, uh, his son, and he takes his family, his, his household, it says, Kol Miknat Kaspo, right, all is, uh, 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 and he circumcises uh, all, all the males, and that's something very, also, not understood. But I think that one of the things we, we can learn from Avram and uh, for his character throughout the, the, the Torah is that he has a blind faith. Um, and I think that it's very hard in a uh, postmodern world where everything is around academics to have a blind faith, to say, you know what, I'm not gonna, th I'm not gonna ask questions. I'm gonna just do what I've been, what I've been told. Um, obviously, it's not by anybody. It's not by uh, um, by uh, you know any random person. It's by God, and sometimes God tells us to do things that we don't understand, and we don't we we can't make sense out of them, and we have to still get up and do that um, because it's it's part of the religion. It's part of the religion to have the blind faith, and I think that 
we have to work very hard. Uh, if let's say uh, up until 200 years ago or 300 years ago, it was much easier to do things blindly because a lot of things were not understood. Um, today, when we have the technology and we have knowledge, and the more we know, uh, we think we were smarter, we're better. We we can we we can do uh, you know, which is true in a lot of senses. But but in religion, it's uh, very important for us to um, to have that blind faith and something just say do um just do what god said uh, one of the stories my father always used to uh, talk, tell me when i was uh, uh, younger was that um he says that uh, they were talking on the radio they had a, a talk on the radio about like w you know doing mitzvot and like the 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 logic behind it and why to do it and so forth and uh, it was the only time he actually called in, and he called in and, and they said so why do they asked him, why why do you do why do you keep your religion so he says well, the answer is very simple because God told me to. That's it. It's so simple. It's so uh, humble of us to understand that we, as much as we know, we, we don't know anything. And sometimes we just have to act as in blind faith. The next thing I want to talk about is, um, is um, standing up, up in, uh, in tolerance uh, um, to um, bad things around us. So Abraham teaches us that... Uh, that you cannot sit quiet when bad things are happening around you. For instance, we know we, there was the um, war, the four kings against the five kings, and they went and they fought, and the four kings won the five kings, and his, and his, uh, his, um, uh, his cousin, Lot, was uh, captured, and uh, he, he couldn't stand, like, he was alone, uh, he, I mean, as much as, as he had, you know, people with him, uh, some say 316, but still, he was fighting four kings that were very strong and dominant in the, in the region. He couldn't sit blindly to this, to the fact that people were suffering and captured and they were, and they were killed. And so he, he gets up against all logic and he, and he goes and he, and he, and he fights. And he returns the and he returns like the the sheep and the and the people and and anybody that was captured, which is something that is is irrational. But it's it's he saw an injustice. He saw uh, kings that are um, that are uh, um, acting bad to their people, and he couldn't just sit back and he had to go and fight for it. Um, another example of uh, uh, standing, you know, on the side and not to, you know like acting when you see something bad, is. Um, when God came to destroy Sodom. So if the first time he saw like injustice in, for people, then in this time he saw injustice from God. And he didn't sit quietly and say, oh, you know what, uh, what this is what God wants, uh, I'll let it go. You know, if God wants to destroy a whole, a whole city, so, and he fights, he actually gets up and he fights against God in this, in this case. He says, what if you find 50, what if you find 20, what if you find 10? What, like, try to find like one person that can save a whole city it's so it's so uh, uh, um, amazing to see how a person um, um, stands up and can't see injustice, and I think that we can learn a lot from that. And when we see somebody, uh, you know, having a hard time, and we see injustice in the world, the easiest way, the easiest thing to do is to say, you know what, I'm just gonna, you know, walk by, or I'm not gonna look at it, or I'm... no, it's not the right thing to do. It's not. The... You have to stand up. You have to. You have to say. Uh, guys, this is not the right thing to do. It's not right to laugh at a person if he's not uh, if he's down. It's not nice to to um, to treat a person in in a bad way. You have to stand up, even if it's the word of God. Um, and then we get to um, to Parashat Chayes Sarah. In Parashat Chayes Sarah, um, we see uh, a few interesting things. You know, they say that there's three places in the uh, course of the Tanakh that uh, Jews bought. Um, the first place is in uh, in our parasha in Pasuk Chesara in Perik Kaf Gimel, where we see that Abraham gets up, and he uh, he wants to bury uh, 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 Sarah, uh, which uh, which just uh, passed away. Uh, you know, one hundred and twenty-seven. It's not young age, but uh, he wants to bury her, and uh, he goes to the the Chitiz and he says to them, "Give me a piece of land. Let me bury my dead." And they say okay, and then eventually he has to buy it from them for a lot of money. They like and and he does, and he buys the piece of land, and he and he buries a uh, uh, Sarah there, and that is Marat Machpela in Hebron. Um, and then another place that we see is Yaakov later on in uh, in Sefer Bereshit in Perik uh, Lamed Gimel, uh, Pasuk Yutet. He says that uh, he goes and to Shechem, 
and he buys a piece of land in Shechem. Now, what? Who's buried in Shechem? Uh, you know, obviously, uh, Kever Yosef is in is in Shechem. And the last place that we see that was bought with money uh, through the through the history is um, obviously Harabite, um, uh, where the temple was uh, was uh, um, built. And that is uh, David. He buys the place in Shmuel Bet uh, Kav Gimel. Kavdalid, he says that uh, um, you know David goes and buys the Temple Mount, and we can see that you know until today, three of the most disputed uh, areas that uh, you know Israel is uh, that uh, that we were fighting over today is those three places: is Hebron, Shechem, and uh, the Temple Mount, which is a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of, 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 of conflict about. Um, but and the question is. Why is this important for us? Like, why is it important to know that Abraham was the first one to buy a piece of land in Israel? It's, it, it obviously wasn't so common in, back in the days because back in, back in the older days, it was, it was a tribal area, the whole, the whole uh, um, Kedan area. There was a lot of tribes, you know, when you had seven, you know, Chiti and Yevusi and Gargashi and Chivi and, and all, all these tribes. Um, and we had a lot of kings and it was very, like a, a very, very tribal area. And uh, who, who decides what land belongs to to who, to to who? Very easy. I mean, you fight over it. You fight over it. You win the land. You get the land, and the land is yours. Um, and in this case, it's very weird actually that Avram bought land from a certain uh, a certain tribe. Um, but he's coming to tell us something. Avram is coming to tell us that when establishing a nation, you need land. It's, very, it's something very essential for uh, for the establishment of the the Israel the the um, the Israelites the Israelim is to buy a piece of land, and that's something we should remember um, always that uh, that Israel is not just uh, um, it's not just a place where a Jew started in uh, you know coming uh, uh, coming in 1882 or or. They they started. Um, they, Israel is a, is an essential part of, of of Judaism. It's an essential part of of who we are. And then um, the the next thing that uh, that uh, we see in the parsha, which is very interesting, is the continu continuation of the Jewish people. So if we talked about um, the land as having a continuation of a physical, like a, a piece of land, to continue the to have a, a nation. Also, the, the, I would call it a spiritual condition, is having kids. Um, in the Parsha, we basically talk mostly about how uh, Abraham sends his, uh, his, his uh, servant to go and to find, um, uh, to, to find a wife for his son, Yitzchak. And uh, he actually he does, he comes back, he brings a wife. And after that, we see that, um, that Abraham, you know, he, after Sarah passes away, he gets married again, he brings more kids to the world. And, he, and then at the end of the parsha, it talks about um, how uh, um, Ishmael, all his generations, and we can't forget that this is the, the and then the, ne the beginning of the next parsha starts, about, uh, starts off talking about how Yitzchak's continuation, right? Um, and, and it goes on. So the, there is two aspects that Abraham is coming to teach us through, these, through this parsha. Is one, in establishing a nation, you need two things. One is land. Two is people. Those two combined together is what makes a nation a strong nation and a, and a, and a, a, a nation that will, will be able to continue. And I want to actually say what, uh, um, what uh, uh, we're doing in, in Stand With Us. Stand With Us is basically an organization that does, is continuing the, the works of Abraham. We um, go around and educate about Israel and we explain the right of the Jewish people for a Jewish land, for, 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 uh, for land. And um, we, we, it was an interesting thing that my friend, a few weeks ago, right before, right around Sukkot, they found a coin from, uh, from uh, uh, 69 uh, CE, where one of the side has the four species on it for the, that we shake on, on uh, Sukkot, and it says, uh, f it's a coin from the year 69, and it says on, on, uh, on one side, it says, four years to rebellion, which is the rebellion that they had at the end of the, uh, before the destruction of the temple, the second temple, and on the other side it says, 
redem redemption for Zion, which is interesting. For 2,000, 2000 years ago, Zionism started, and they believe that, and, 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 and we have proof to it on the coins where, where they printed out. They said, we believe that this is the place where we should be living. And what, what we do in Stand With Us is exactly that. We show, we talk about the facts of Israel. We explain what is going on in Israel. We, ex we explain um, 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 why, you know, the history of Israel. We explain that Israel, that Zionism didn't start in the, in the late uh, 1800s. It didn't, say, like, that there was, that through all the years, through our prayers, through the Bible, through the coins we find, all the proof shows that we've been for thousands of years longing to come back to Israel. So that's one of the things we do, education. We do education in basically all ages, in high schools, in colleges, in community lectures, um, uh, and then also we have our uh, very active uh, social media. We have over 1.3 million followers on Facebook, and we get we reach over 200 million people every year on social media just to tell what the, the facts of what is going on in Israel. And um, um, and I think that that. Also, the, the, the continuation, like talking about the continuation of Israel, is something very important. In the United States, it must, it, sometimes it's very sad to hear about the fact that, you know, some people don't care about the continuation of the Jewish people, and they don't, uh, they don't, it's, they're, they're not, it's not important to them enough. But um, we have to remember what Abraham is coming to teach us of the continuation of Israel and um, uh, through the land, of the importance of the land, and of course through the um, the generations and to pass that on um, I encourage everybody to uh, of course um, uh, you know go onto our Facebook and you know learn about Israel through what what we do and through what we post and uh, and uh, and share that because education is the is the basis to everything and we need to share the education with the world um, I want to uh, uh, end off by uh, summarizing what uh, what uh, we said uh, uh, today. Um, the first thing is that Abraham is uh, he has a blind faith. He believes in what God says. God tells him to do even irrational things and just does it. That's one of the basics of of Judaism: is to believe, is to do, even if you don't understand. The second thing is that he doesn't stand in the side when he sees injustice. He goes out. He fights. He even if it's fighting to, uh, to, uh, uh, in, um, to um, fighting people or fighting God, he goes out and he fights because when he sees injustice. And then the last things that we that we saw is that he to in order to um, maintain uh, the option for uh, for Jewish pe for for Jewish uh, people, we need to have the Jewish um, uh, the land, and we need to have the um, the, the generations to. Uh, uh, be, be fruitful and to multiply. Um, um, okay. Uh, I would like to just add please go to Stand With Us San Diego chapter and help both promote, donate, and support. They're doing a fantastic job. We're all members of this great organization. We're very honored to have Yosef here with us. So, Atzlacha, thank you so much, Yosef. God bless you. And we're really honored to have you at the Kolo. Thank you very, very much, Yohan. Right.